Hello and welcome to the lovely church of Wymondham, dedicated to St. Peter in Leicestershire. There's another church in Norfolk with exactly the same spelling name, but they pronounce that Wyndham. And I've been taken up by my shoelaces on occasions for not getting the correct pronunciation. So I do apologise in advance if I incorrectly pronounce the name of your village. The church you can see here is built in the early English style on a cruciform plan, although the tower is at one end. The majority is built from local stone, except for the third story of the tower, which as you can see is made from a freestone. These two lower stages of the tower are from the 1200s. The arches of the naves, chancel and the windows here are from the 14th century and the clerestory or clerestory above is from the 15th century. There was another entrance door in the west wall beneath this lancet window and in 1864 this was done away with. When the loft was removed a circular arched doorway closed up was revealed to the north side of the point of the arch. This would have led to the first floor and communicated with an external staircase of some sort on the northeast. During a restoration in 1864, it was decided to lengthen the church to provide better accommodation by taking down the organ loft at the west end of the nave. And when they did this, they found hidden a tower arch and brick walls which had blocked up two arches in the nave arcades, one on the north and one on the south. This tower and its recessed spire has been bruised over the ages. In 1889, it was struck by lightning. Then, 60 years later, the spire received another wrath of the elements, with many of its stones dislodged by a storm. This lantern with coloured glass was rescued from being consigned to the rubbish tip. Here in the porch, the seats on either side are a relic of the days before the church had any seating accommodation and were placed there so people might rest themselves before going into the Mass. Here in the north aisle you can see a blocked up northern door and there's nothing to indicate when this was done but has probably not been used for several hundred years. This is a heavily stained cobble on the north wall supporting the roof beams. Grotesque and fearsome, reminding the worshippers of the torments of hell.
This north transept is slightly wider, but not so deep as the one on the south and, like its opposite number, appears to have once been used as a chapel. High above are several stone steps cut through the north wall of the nave and which were once, with the help of wooden stairs, a means of access to the rood loft. This church has a very high roof for a church of its size and as you look to the west end, in the stonework of the tower, you can see the score marks outlining the pitch of the earlier roof. Here is the southern transept, known to the parishioners as the chapel, and was once the chantry. You can see here a really deep hagioscope, or a squint as it's often known. Here you can see a large oak Jacobean cupboard carved with the Annunciation baptism and a panel richly carved with the cherub heads and spiritual scenes. It's certainly very old and could possibly at one time have been an altar and reredos. Here, badly worn on the floor, is the recumbent effigy of Sir John Hamlin, who was a crusader. Here is the once fine alabaster-topped alt tomb of Sir Thomas Barclay, who died in 1488, and Petronilla, his wife. It has suffered terribly from the initial carvers of many generations and the graffiti they've put there. Look at the feet marks. People have actually gouged around their shoes. This is a recorder-like instrument played by John Bursnell in the church's orchestra, which accompanied the singing before the first organ was installed. Between the effigy and the altar tomb, on a flat blue stone on the floor, have been two figures in brass, of which the woman now only remains, but the inscription around the verge is almost complete. They represent Sir Maurice Barclay, who died in 1522, and Dame Marjorie, his wife, who died in 1521. Here in the chancel, the present stonework was executed in 1864. Set in the south wall, as is usual, is a piscina or drain to carry off water used for the ablution of vessels. To the west of the piscina is the sedilia, three stone seats or canopied stalls used by the celebrant and the two priests acting as assistants. Thank you for watching this short film of St. Peter's Church in Wymundham, Leicestershire.